Now, I'm going to leave you with a fast sequence here just to sort of tell you what some of the things that get in the way, it's our ego. We have ego of our biology. Here's a new tree of life. Maybe, you, maybe you've seen it. It's my favorite representation of the tree of life. A little stylized. The beginning of life is in the center, and time moves out in every direction. Most of us, when we grew up, there was the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. There's more divisions of it now. We have protists and fungi. Bacteria is a tiny little section down there. But where are we? We must be up in the animals section. Let's zoom in. Oh, oh, there we are. Where are there? Oh, okay. Let's get a little closer. Oh, I still can't read it. Oh, up oh, there we go. Uh, a little closer. Homo sapiens. Okay. Get any book from 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Humans are at the top of some diagram, like we're some kind of model of biological evolution, like we're in charge. Meanwhile, there are more bacteria living and working in one centimeter of your lower colon than all human beings who have ever been born. I know that's a really nasty thought. <laughs> Nonetheless, it is true, and a reminder that we are not the ones in charge. They are. We are simply anaerobic, dark, homes where bacteria can bathe in fecal matter. And don't get them upset, because they will tell you who's in charge if you... Uh, there's some Earth ego, too. Let me, let me fix that for you. For, there's the planet Saturn. Uh, this is a Hubble picture, actually, but we're actually orbiting Saturn right now. And here's a really cool picture of Saturn. It's a little different because the sun is behind Saturn. The sun is eclipsed by Saturn in this picture. So the rays come across the edge of this ball of Saturn, which the Saturn is gaseous. And that's why there's this glowing edge. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. So we, we are out beyond Saturn, looking back towards the center of the solar system. So wait a minute, wait, wait, I see, what, I see something there. Wait, what, huh, what, huh? what, what? Oh, that's Earth! Oh my gosh! Earth! Four pixels. There you go. Nope, six pixels, sorry. As Carl Sagan noted in his beautifully written and elocuted words regarding the pale blue dot, everyone you've ever known has lived on that dot. And it just happens to be in the way of another photo. And some more ego, space, the universe. There's these two things, dark matter and dark energy. We don't know what they are, but they are most of the universe. There it is. Everything we understand about this universe occupies 4% of what drives the universe. 22% dark matter, 74. We don't know what these things are, but we can measure them and we know they're there. If anything is humbling to the scientist, it is the fact that our understanding of the world Three more slides. How about the whole universe? But maybe it's not even one universe. We had one planet. Earth is it. No, there's eight, nine, ten more planets. Well, our sun is surely special. No, there's 100 billion suns in the galaxy. Well, the galaxy is surely special. No, there's 100 billion galaxies in the universe. Well, it's our, it's our universe. Maybe not. There's cogent theoretical questions that address the multiverse. We don't know how to draw it, but you'd be just one of these bubbles. And the last of the demotions of our ego, for me, my favorite, is the chemistry of it all. Let's look at the abundance of elements in the universe in order. Hydrogen, helium, oxygen, sound effects for free here, carbon, nitrogen, my favorite element of the all next. Other, okay, so now we look at Earth, life on Earth, the number one atom in the human body is found in the water molecule, H2O, you got two H's for every O, the number one atom in the human body is hydrogen. The number two atom, nope, it's not helium. Chemically inert, you couldn't do anything with it even if you had it. 
except inhale it and sound like Mickey Mouse, but you're not interacting chemically with it. Next in the body, oxygen. In order, next, carbon. We are carbon-based life. Next, nitrogen. Next, class, other. Thank you. These elements match one for one. We are made of the most common ingredients in the cosmos. This is an image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope at one of the most uninteresting parts of the stellar night sky. There's like five stars in this picture sitting on our nose. They're the ones with the spikes. There's a bright one, sort of middle right, one in the lower section, one in the upper left. Everything else is looking through the screen door out to the greater cosmos. And every smudge in this picture is an entire galaxy filled itself with hundreds of billions of stars. And in each one of these galaxies, stars are forging the chemical elements that make up the universe and, in fact, make up life. It's not good enough just to make the elements. You have to somehow get rid of them and donate them to the rest of the galaxy. And that's precisely what the high-mass stars do. They explode, scattering their enriched ingredients across the cosmos in every one of these galaxies. And that's what gives us the understanding. We've known this for 70 years. That's what gives us the understanding of our relationship to the universe. Some people are, are humbled, some are, are feel small, and I feel large when I look at this picture because I know, I know about my chemical kinship with it all. The fact that not only do we exist in this universe, by virtue of the fact that stars manufacture the elements to begin with, spread them, share the love across the rotating galaxy, we get to say not only are we in the universe, the universe is in us. And I know of no more profound, even spiritual understanding of the universe than that.